In 1892, some 117 years ago, thoroughbred horse racing was introduced at Belvedere Racecourse in then Salisbury, Rhodesia. 66 years later, the track was moved to Borrowdale. Before a crowd of some 10,000 patrons, on the 5th of July 1958, the first race meeting was held at Borrowdale Park. 51 years later, on the weekend of Sunday the 28th of June 2009, Borrowdale Park celebrated its Golden Jubilee. Culminating in an eight-race card, with total stakes of 50,000 US dollars, the Borrowdale Golden Jubilee stands as a milestone to the dedication and spirit of survival of the horse racing fraternity, and for many symbolizes hope of a new dawn for the people of Zimbabwe. It's very significant, partly because I don't think many of us who left in racing, breeding, owning, training at the moment would have dreamt uh, five years ago that we could still be standing. People left the country over these last 10 years saying, that's it, the industry's finished. And I must say, at a number of times over the last few years, it's looked as though the Mishonland Turf Club couldn't survive the onslaught. But it's kept going, and the significance of getting to this milestone is that people have pulled together and said, gracious me, we're, they're still racing alive as an industry in this country. Isn't that remarkable? Isn't it incredible? Let's give it a bash for the next few years. It's something that we have wanted for the last eight or nine years. It is, it's the hope and it really marks the turning point of this country. I think the country is definitely turning. It is on the up and up. It's a dream. It's six months ago we could not have even dreamt of this. It's an amazing coincidence that the 50th anniversary comes at the time that we started a new country. Um, a new government of national unity. It's all happened in 2009. So yeah, we start the, the next 50 years and it's uh, wonderful. And I think it's the opportunity, the exposure that Borodale Racing really needs. We've kept ourselves going, but and we need to bring that to the attention of the world. Definitely, this is a very important event because I've never seen this before. It is first time to have such kind of a race with the good stakes uh, in every race. I wish if I can win to yeah, you know. Just a celebration of, yes, the fact that we're still here and uh, we're going to try and win every race on the day. I've been absolutely overwhelmed at the response. I, I had to, to go out and target people who had been influential in racing over the last 50 years. And we did identify those people and we approached them very directly and asked them if they would help and their responses uh, and gifts and donations is what has been able to pay for all of this. It's a huge event for Zimbabwe racing. I think it's going to raise the spirits quite a lot. But you know, the trouble with events like this is they come and once they're gone, there's a bit of a deflated feeling after it. But you know what, it just keeps renewing our, uh, our interest and uh, knowing that we can keep going and let's go for the next 50. And a particular golden jubilee for me because I was at the first race meeting that Borrowdale Park held 50 years ago. So I feel that's quite an honour to be here now. It is very, very important. You know, we are marking, a, it's a milestone. After all these years, racing has thrived in, in Zimbabwe. It's a great uh, honour to those who have, from the beginning, believed in the industry. Otherwise, if uh, there were not people who are dedicated, determined to make sure that uh, it survived, well, this institution would have uh, been abandoned a long time ago. But I think uh, we have had very good people who are future-oriented, people who think that, uh, yes, things might be difficult, but we must carry on. And uh, it's very, very important. There is enormous resilience in the engine of racing. And the engine of racing, I always feel, are owners, trainers, jockeys, breeders, and the racehorses themselves. They're a particular breed of people. Racing survives because of these kind of people and their interaction that keeps the sport going. Resilience, passion, 
for those fortunate enough the ability to make a plan. All in the mix for surviving the Zimbabwe of the past decade. Even in Borodale, the Santon of Harare, daily power and water cuts need to be factored in. Tap water should be boiled before drinking. But right on cue, every June morning, the sun shines and the birds sing, heralding yet another glorious African day. And lately, a renewed sense of optimism. Things have turned. It's not a great deal better, but it's better. It's better to this extent. We are now in a US dollar based economy, so we're able to freely buy stock feed, uh, medications for horses, equipment, all the things that we need. Um, whereas before, when we were in Zimbabwe dollars, which was a useless currency, we couldn't buy anything. And breeders were going down because they simply couldn't control their expenses in a runaway inflation environment where the Zim dollar bought nothing. And where local grain was not available, hay was not available, oats wasn't available, it was extremely difficult for breeders to keep going in, the, in that situation. That's changed. It's changed the, the place dramatically. I mean, effectively, everybody cannot be predict where they're going. If you look at it from a racing perspective, take, take any yard in this country, take Lisa's yard, for example. It's just so good now to know that you, your wages are going to be the same every week. You know where you're going to, what you're going to do. You know what you're going to charge your, your, uh, your, your patrons. You know what it's going to cost you to renew your colours. Everything's predictable now. Thanks go to the stalwarts of the game, um, the owners really, because you know there was a time where, when we were still being paid out in Zimbabwe dollars, you know, horse could win on Sunday and we'd get our money by Wednesday and it would be worth two packets of cotton wool and a bottle of bluestone, which, and I'm not exaggerating. So, you know, thanks really to them. Um, you know, now at least if we win a race, we pay three or four months keep. And, you know, that's a big help. But it, it has been solely thanks to the MTC who kept us going and, you know, raced, although they were facing dire circumstances themselves, and the owners and the trainers and the jockeys who stuck it out. Passion. Yeah, I think it really is passion. I mean, people that are just prepared to spend their entire life keeping horses fed and keeping the industry going and, and loving racing. And it's been really good for the community to have something to focus on and um, it keeps their dreams going. It survives through its own tenacity and the people, to be honest. I mean, there's some fantastic people involved in this industry, from the trainers through to the, the jockeys that we have, the uh, the administrative side, the breeders have been very hardy. Um, and there's a good bunch of owners who, quite frankly, from an economic perspective, would not be doing this. I mean, you're not, you're not really doing this to make money. Just, well, we are surviving, but it's, uh, we have been in a hard time, especially last year, the all of last year. You know, you couldn't get what you want, actually, or could you eat what you, what you get, that is all. But there was no choice at that time. You come from such a hard time, you come to a, a better life, that means it's, it's good, you know. And it's, it is the tenacity, and I'll be frank, the real tenacity comes through, and again, I was wrong, I didn't even mention the grooms. The grooms have struggled big time here. I talk about the grooms that I've got working here. They battled more than we did with what happened because they starved and they were hungry and they were cold and you know they battled more than, than the people who had a roof over their head. We've got a lot of old Africans that have been in this game longer than we have. You know that my head foreman's been in racing 39 years. Old Caston who works for Swanson, he's, he's been a groom for over 50 years. And if you could see these guys and how they genuinely love and nurture their horses and of course their horses win for them. Horses that shouldn't win, win for them. You know I think there's a, an African part that really could be spoken about. Not just a token, not just because we think that uh, it's, it's politically correct to talk about them. There, there are genuine, genuine guys out there that do our horse work for us and I think they are often uh, not taken care of. The most difficult thing is with the hyperinflation, with the environment, simply the expenses far exceed the income, no matter how 
fine, mean and lean we've tried to be in the operations. So much so that we had to take a drastic decision of selling an asset. It was a commercial property just down the road from the turf club. When we disposed the, 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 the assets, basically what we did was to invest uh, the, on the stock exchange. And uh, with dollarization, obviously, the stock exchange has also been dollarized. And where we have uh, had uh, a need for, for cash, we have parceled out, we have disposed some of the shares. And in an instance where we thought uh, the share portfolio was a little bit undervalued, we went to the banks and uh, borrowed for working capital. We were a racing club, we had to operate. We had to operate, we had to sell the building to get the stakes back to a reasonable level. Um, some return for the loyalty of the owners, the trainers, the jockeys, the people in the industry who've, who've stayed on, who've kept their horses in training. Because they certainly didn't stay on for the money prior to that. Without South Africa, and can I repeat, without South Africa, we could not be where we are today. And I pay great respects to, to our friends at Pumelela, our great friends at, uh, at the Gold Circle, our great friends at the Teletrek. Because with those, without those guys, we would not have survived and they've actually supported us. And also, I pay great respects to our guys at the National Horse Racing Authority, who, through their monitoring, have been able to sustain racing in Zimbabwe. Compared to where we were, um, there is definitely light at the end of the tunnel. A while ago, I didn't know where the tunnel was. Um, and in the last couple of months since we've dollarized, we've seen a 20% growth in our turnover. We're on the right track because we have a very good management committee at the club. We have a very committed board and um, yeah, the, the future's good. The future's good, but we have a long way to go and we're not out of the desperate waters just yet. The cue ball pitted beyond recognition. Q-tips long worn down to the wood threadbare pockets. But with the right attitude, apprentices at the Jockey Academy make a plan and enjoy a game of pool. Basically the welfare of the apprentices is my main concern. Um, I'm trying desperately to um, get everything back in working order that isn't working, i.e. lights, geysers, stoves. Um, we're getting along fine at the moment. Uh, the biggest problem is obviously financial, um, but I'm overcoming that bit by bit. And at least we've got hot water now when we have water available. And uh, the food side of it, a few of the heavy jockeys I've got on a diet, we will see uh, this week what their weights have come down to. It seems to be quite a good diet, it's a, of German design. I'm basically the, uh, the senior riding master for the more senior racing riding apprentices, not necessarily the ones that are starting to ride, more the, the apprentices that are actually race riding. But basically it's getting them to sit properly, balance is what it's all about, and feel. You know, they've got a good, have firm hands, but gentle hands. And the balance is what it's all about. Well, the top apprentice at this time is a little chap called Nicky Sabanda, and uh, he's, he's very light, but very vigorous, balances the horse well, and again for his size, extremely strong, but again, very nice sensitive hands and uh, in the finish, he's as good as anybody. My father told me he was riding from other resources, so he used to teach me how to ride it. So I made a connection with other women, and then he bring me here, and I started working. I started riding in races 2006. I've got four years now. Well, I've got experience at races. I mean, the equipment for these kids, you know, I need a lot of kits, uh, i.e. body protectors, the new whips, etc. and so on. We need this stuff, but unfortunately at the moment we just haven't got that kind of funds. Slowly but surely I'm getting things back into running order, but again, it boils down to finance. It, it can't be done overnight. I see the corner being turned the way things are going at the moment. It's going to take time, but we're definitely, I think, on the up. The tenacity, again, I've probably used that word four times in this, in this, in this uh, answer, is what really it's all about. The loyalty and the absolute love of the game is what's kept it going. No, I've never thought of leaving Zimbabwe because it is my home and it's been good to me. I was determined to keep going and I have 
been having horses racing for many, many, many years. And I've got 10 in training at the moment with different trainers. So every race meeting uh, I do have runners, which give me great pleasure. And uh, of course the breeding is a huge challenge, but I love that. So um, Zimbabwe, I hope, will see me through. I'm now over 80 years of age and uh, I feel that I shall enjoy the rest of my time here. Eventually, you look at it, and I'm born and bred in Zimbabwe, we've never, never left the country for any lengthy period, about the longest I've ever been out of here is four or five months. And um, I thought, you know what, this is where I live, this is where I'm going to enjoy life. Let's get on with it. And the industry was struggling, uh, we we're earning very little in stakes. Um, I thought, you know what, it's time. Let's, let's, let's start investing back in Zimbabwe. And um, I, I've done it. I just think it's, uh, it's my country, born and bred here. I want to keep supporting it. You know, when you invest the kind of money you invest in horses, the returns have to come sooner or later. And if you're lucky and you get an Earl of Surrey or an Epitombi or whatever from Zimbabwe, what a pleasure. And I think that's a testament to Zimbabwe's own ability that we can breed horses like that as well. But Earl of Surrey comes roaring into the lead. Thunder Kilo. Well, Earl is a, an absolutely amazing horse and uh, well done to Lisa for picking him. I mean, you know, nobody else really saw it. Earl was a big horse, strong horse, huge heart. He will run any distance. I mean, and he will, he will, he will slug it out with anybody. He's obviously a tremendous horse with amazing ability. Any horse that can win a 1,200 meter sprint at the top division and also the derby must be a top horse. Here comes Earl of Surrey and he's simply the best as Earl of Surrey gets up to beat them. I'm sure that since joining a bigger stable he has uh, progressed, you know, because he's probably been, been tested a bit more. We, we never had anything good enough to work him with. And, you know, at times we had to set up a relay of horses to work him, uh, you know, with pickups along the point, just to keep him concentrating and going. Obviously he's progressed and, you know, we thrilled for Zim, it's fantastic. It's turned out in the end that he is an amazing sprinter and he's got a tremendous turn of speed and in fact when he won the Golden Casino the other day at Scottsville his time was better than JJ's, JJ the Jet Plane's time a year ago. Very difficult to compare those things because who knows what the conditions were year on year. But his times compared to the other three 1200 meter races run on the day was superb. But we've had other horses that have done very well. Obviously Epi Tom is right up there and uh, not only did I think she put Zimbabwe on the map, I think she put South Africa on the map. It was very, very funny to watch how South Africa basically embraced Epi Tom as theirs. But you know, that's, that's what it's all about. We had previous Group 1 winners, uh, one of the guests who was bred by John and Lisa Harris, uh, won the Mercury Sprint. Uh, Merciless Sun many, many years ago won the Holiday Inn, which was the precursor to the Summer Cup, another Group 1. There's been, there's been numerous horses that have done very well down there from, from Zimbabwe. I think there are a lot of people who think that racing is frivolous and, and can be expended or is expendable. And if a country gets into a bad economic way, maybe racing will be the first to go because it's a luxury sport and who would care? It's proved to be exactly the, the opposite from what I observe. And I, I think that things that are not needed tend to disappear. If you're not wanted, you go eventually. Racing hasn't gone away, despite all the huge problems. It's still going, which, from which I draw the conclusion that there must be a need in people's hearts for racing. <laughs>